Hey Disney fans, how are you? David here from Disney for Brits with another episode of Top Tips. This time we're gonna be talking about money. Really important, really key, you can spend a lot of it. So let's start off with tip number one. Tip number one is really simple, it's have some cash with you when you land or when you get into the America. Um, you're gonna need this to get yourself a coffee or something like that. You might need it for toll booths. So have some US cash with you. And I'm gonna tell you a little bit more about that in the other four hints and tips. So where should you get it from? Um, the key thing here is don't buy it from the airport unless you've already got a pre-purchased rate. Walk-up rates at the airport are dire, they're appalling, you'll get much, much less money for your pound, so definitely get it beforehand. And there's a number of ways to do this. Number one, post office is a great place to go. Pop into the post office, they tend to have great rates. If you're a bit of a researcher, just Google for um, great exchange rates. Martin's Money, I think the site's called, is a really good place and you can see where you can get the best rates from. And depending on how much you're buying, it can make a real difference. I've seen rates um, for America which were $1.30 when you're buy buying online, $1.10 at the airport, so you're getting 20 cents less per pound every pound you know every ten dollars or every ten pounds you spend you get two dollars less so do check that out the other way to do it is to actually get it delivered to you again check online for that only use ones that are fca approved otherwise your money could go anywhere even if you're not planning on spending a lot of cash i definitely would recommend you have one two three hundred dollars in cash with you it's definitely worth keeping that in your wallet even though we're card friendly and the final place that you can get it from is on a Revolut card, and you can get that from cash machines pretty much anywhere in America. What's a Revolut card, I hear you say? I'll come to that. So, tip number one, take some cash with you. Tip number two, we're gonna talk about American notes, bank notes. Now, in the UK, we've got a five, a 10, a 20, and a 50, and that's it and they're all different colors and they're all different sizes and they're all pretty easy to tell the difference. America, not that simple. So here's some which I've, I've surprisingly got some money that I didn't spend. Um, these all look pretty much the same. If you look, they're pretty much the same size, but actually that's a $1, that's a $5, that's a $20, and if I put them next to each other, they are all of the same size, you can see there. And the same applies to the 50 and the $100. So it's really, really important that you do two things. Number one, always look really clearly at the note that you give somebody. Check for the number in the top corner. And I know this might sound like, you know, David, you're teaching us to suck edge. You're telling us something we already know it's really easy to make a mistake, especially if you're flustered in a shop and you've just had to count out your coins. You could give somebody, instead of a $1, you could give them a $100 tip. They'll be delighted. Most people will tell you, but bear this in mind. $1, $5, the 10's the same size, the 20's the same size, the 50's the same size, and the $100's the same size. $100 about 75 pounds. So my other tip within a tip is in your wallet, make sure whenever you put money into it, sort it out into sizes. Have the highest at the back of your wallet going forward to the lowest. So when you take it out, you know what you're giving them. Read your notes. Crazy to say, but definitely something to do. Tip number three is the coins. Now, again, a little bit more complicated. So we've got a penny, a two penny, five p, ten p, twenty p, fifty p, and we call them penny, two p, five p, ten p, twenty p, fifty p, and a pound coin. Uh, the Americans have got, and I have to write this down because I still get it wrong even now. A quarter, a dime, a nickel, and a penny. A quarter, exactly as it says, it's a quarter of a dollar, so it's twenty-five cents. And this is the biggest of the coins, so that's really easy a silver quarter. Next one down is called a dime, and this is 10 cents, and it's a lot smaller than the quarter. So that's great. 
Next one down below this is a nickel. This is five cents. Guess what? Bigger than the dime. And if you see those side by side, and this is exactly the same really as our 20p and our 10p. So a dime is, <laughs> I have to look it up. A dime is 10 cents. A nickel is five cents, but the nickel is bigger than the dime. And the last one, a one cent, is called a penny. So that's quite easy. That's the only brown copper chrome one that you've got. So bear these in mind when you're looking at your change. Um, don't worry if you get stressed out. American cashiers are very used to us Brits and other international travelers just giving, put, laying out all their coins and then working through them. But quarter, dime, nickel and penny. Um, it's always worth having some of these. Uh, where there are toll booths that still take cash, it's worth having them with you. So once you've got your money and you go into the States and you go in with cash, you've got notes, buy something one of the shops just to get some change is definitely worth having. Some things you should do before you go on a holiday. And this is where I'm gonna start talking to you about my magic pile of cards here. Um, I look like a bit of a magician, but there's some really good and important things in here. If you're, I've said this before on some of my other hints and tips, if you're a fan of Flying Virgin Atlantic, get yourself one of these. Um, the numbers are all on the back, so I'm quite safe. This is a Virgin Atlantic credit card, and there's two types. There's one that you get free, and one that you pay 120 pounds a year for. Put all of your spending on this. Health warning, only if you pay it off each month. If you're one of those that stacks up lots of cash, I'm definitely not recommending that. But where you would normally spend on your, um, your bank card to your normal account, uh, your debit card, put it on this, pay it off each month, and you start collecting points. And points give you, not prizes, but cheap flights. Um, Virgin do a scheme where, which is called Flying Club. Uh, and as an example, I bought two premium class flights for May for a, just over 900 pounds. If I'd have brought two standard class flights, they'd have cost me $250 each. And that's against a normal price of $500. You have to, 500 pounds, I'm sorry. You have to pay the tax, but if you're going for better flights or just use this and get the points and buy the flights. The other thing you do is if you spend more than £10,000 a year, and if you put all your spending on this, it's really possible, um, you get a voucher which gives you an upgrade or a companion flight. So you pay for one flight and you get one free. So definitely worth looking at, and I'll put a link down below in the description. I'm not being paid to do this. BA do the same thing with their credit card and Avias points. So um, there's other ones out there. I'm not just plugging Virgin, but they're my airline of choice. Second thing to get is one of these, which is a Revolut card. Again, not getting anything for saying this, but this gives you the ability to pay for things in the States. And what you do is you put money on it. So if you want to save whilst you're getting ready to go on holiday, you can put money on this and then you've got a stack of US dollars when you've got there. Also, you can do an instant transaction. So you put money from your normal bank account into your Revolut account and put that into dollars and you get the rate of the day. So where we've seen at the moment, rates are going up and down. You can actually put a couple of hundred pounds worth of dollars on here and it's really good and you use this just like a normal credit card when you get there. So it's a good way of saving and it's a good way of getting more cash without having to go through exchanging money. Um, the other bit about this is you can use it at an ATM, a cash machine. I think it's about 200 pounds a day, but if you go back to point one about taking some money with you, if you've got some cash on this, great way to get some money in your hand without having to stress about other things. Also, before you go, something you can use to spend while you're, actually, this is more while you're there. So we've done, before you go, getting money, notes, coins. Now let's talk about while you're there. Um, I will cover this one up. This used to be a post office credit card. Um, they've now renamed themselves Yaya or Jarja or something like that. This allows you fee-free transactions abroad. So if you normally buy on if you buy on a normal credit card overseas you quite often get hit by two charges number one you get a 
a conversion rate, a currency conversion charge, and then you'll get a non-sterling charge. So you could be paying up to 10% more per transaction. If you got something like this, it's transaction fee and fee free. And the difference with this one to the Revolut card is you're not loading it up with money. So this is a proper credit card and you pay it off when you get home. Again, I'm not suggesting you give yourself loads and loads of debt. That's not what I'm here to do. But this is a card that I've used lots of times and it just means should I wanna put some purchases and pay them when I get home, I can do that with this one. So we've got the Revolut card, load that up before you go. The Virgin credit card, the Virgin money card, use that or a BA card to get points to get your flights cheaper. And then we've got the Yaya card, which enables you to spend transaction free in the States. So definitely worth doing that as well. Another plug in here is with your phone. Um, make sure that your phone allows you to use your data and network uh, minutes and text when you're abroad. Three are really good at this, I use them. Not plugging three, other networks do the same. But effectively, if you go onto some of their tariffs, you get something called, something like away from home, but it means that you then can use your normal data and minutes and tariffs in the States. Great when you've got a car, great for sat navs, great for booking things. Um, so definitely look at that. And I know Vodafone and the other people also do that as well. Um, final two cards, which I think are, are really important. Well, I, I think they're important. Number one is an annual pass, and I've talked about this before. You're probably thinking that's really expensive. Um, I did a few sums on this before, so when these do come back on sale, it's worth getting one annual pass for your party, which gives you a year's worth of access to Disney, but it also gives you some savings. So for instance, parking in Disney parks, if you're staying off site, is free. That's $25 a day. So if you go to Disney every day, that's 240 quid thereabouts, 280 quid. Um, you also get discounts on your shopping. You also get a photo pass. So all the cool Disney pictures that you can get from their photographers, when normality resumes, you can get that from this. That's worth $200, so £150. So we're already up to nearly £500. If you then take off the 20%, between 10 and 20% you get on everything that you buy, and most people are gonna spend a decent sized family in two weeks, probably $1,000 in Disney, 800 pounds, that's another 160. So you're looking at maybe 600 pounds worth of savings on this. If you then compare that to a 14 day pass, which is about 450 pounds, it might be worth looking at. So look up Disney's annual pass. They're not available now, and I'm talking to you in a weirdly snowy February in Brighton, and it never snows here, but look those ones up and see if that might be of use to you. Final card, which will absolutely make a massive difference to you, is this one. Look at this lovely shiny card. So I, I'm such a fan about Disney. You can see everything behind me that I started my own travel agency. It's called D for B Travel. I'll put it up on the board uh, on the comments and I'll put a little thing at the side here somewhere to show you it. Um, I can pretty much book any kind of holiday that you want and I'm booking up until 2022. I can book hotels, I can book flights, I can book parking and not just Disney. If you want to take a trip in September 21, uh, go somewhere hot and sunny, assuming the world's woke, uh, woken up and has got better, I can help you with that as well. So anything you need, whether it's a flight, a hotel, parking, the whole lot, I have amazing suppliers. I've just had a new supplier who's come on that does luxury cruises of 200 people on, on those big clippers with the massive sails. Um, so drop me a note, d for b Travel, also, please don't forget to subscribe. There'll be something along here somewhere to this channel and also to d for b Travel as well, which there'll be a link somewhere here or down below. And don't forget to click the bell on both of them and you'll get notified when I pop a new video on. So I hope that was useful. Five hints and tips around money. Get some cash before you go. Here's how complicated the notes are. Can't believe I've got money left over. Coins are even more complicated. There's a stack of cards that you can take advantage of, whether it be an annual pass, whether it be a, I'm really trying not to show these, the Yar Jar card, uh, Revolut, and Virgin Money 
a credit card, save some money before you go, get some points to get your flight cheaper, contact me to get your rooms cheaper, and just, the craziness we're in now, it will be better next year. Start thinking about booking your trips now. Most of the airlines and travel agencies are allowing you to move things forward if it's not all great. So don't put it off, do think about doing it. Consider those five points. And if they've been helpful, let me know. I'm really keen to understand what you think. And if you've got some other things that you'd like me to give you hints and tips on, just put them in the comments below. I don't know why I did that, but put them in the comments below and I'll be really happy to put another section um, up around these, another top tips, another five hints. That's it. I hope you've enjoyed that. Five hints on money. I'm David from Disney for Brits and D for B Travel. And as our pal Mickey says, I'll see you real soon. <laughs>